Hello and welcome. I'm Pastor Mary Beth. This is the Trempolo United Methodist Church and it's Sunday, July 17th, 2022. And we're going to be talking about baptism today. So I invite you right now to put this on hold and go and find a little basin of water, just a little, just a little bowl of some sort that you can put a few drops of water in. And when you come back, we'll have our scripture reading. And we find our scripture reading today in the Gospel of Matthew in the, church, the third chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. This is the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. May these words bless you this week. The first time that Larry Patton heard about Angie was through her daughter. Out of the blue, the daughter called to interview him. She said she was searching for a pastor who could accept that her mother um, was covered in tattoos, had dabbled in tarot cards and other things, and that neither of them belonged to any church. She told Larry, my mom doesn't need someone telling her that she or I are, he are headed for hell. You won't say that, will you? She's dying from cancer and she doesn't need to hear about all the stuff she's done wrong. She'd like to see a pastor though. Are you the right one? She asked Larry. Are you the one that could talk to her? Did any of these qualifiers bother Pastor Larry? Not one bit. These moments happen, that the phone call or the visit that comes out of the blue and into a pastor's life and into your life. In certain situations, and, and then you fun, suddenly find yourself involved with a stranger who needs, wants something. What did Larry know for sure about Angie? Well, that her daughter loved her enough to make a cold call to a pastor that Angie had a spiritual need and was courageous enough to ask for it. And so Larry finds himself in a chair beside Angie's bed, listening. And it was soon obvious that there had been all kinds of trouble in her past, poor choices and anger and failures. And this wasn't the first time she battled cancer, but it would be her last. A bed with a, a zigzag afghan pulled up around Angie's shoulders is what, what he saw. And Larry saw the beginnings and endings of colorful tattoos coming up from under the afghan. And in fact, a dragon tattoo that came up around her ear. She doesn't mention her tattoos, but she asks Larry if she told him that they didn't belong to a church. She did, he said. Doesn't matter to me. Angie looks away, she blinks, and then she turns back and she looks into Larry's eyes, a steady gaze. What about baptism? Angie asks. I've never been baptized. Now Angie doesn't want to be baptized because it's a, a, a slick ticket to heaven or a cheap get out of hell pass. Instead, Larry talks to Angie about um, baptism as a celebration, a watery gift where we humans get to trust a loving creator. It's a ritual that dares to say that the last breath we take may be the end of what we know, but it's not the end of what the holy has in store for us. Angie nods to this. They hold hands and Larry knows that it is an inadequate explanation of baptism because he's a little bit more confident about what baptism is not. It is not that heavenly ticket. It is not a ritual that makes a Christian better than a non-Christian. 
Angie has stopped all the radiation and the chemo, and her doctors have used the words, the word weeks. Her daughter will soon be making more cold calls to hospice, to a funeral home. And what matters right now is what they're thinking about. What matters right now? Blessing. Giving and receiving thanks. Choosing to believe in forever life, not final death. Jesus said, and our United Methodist tradition uses as our mantra, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Do this. The Gospels proclaim that the heavens opened at Jesus' baptism. The divine voice said, or did it shout, this is my beloved, beloved, beloved. It's a word and a declaration that mattered then. It mattered to Angie as water trickled over her warm forehead into the pillow case behind her. It matters now. And so we will do this. We will remember our baptisms knowing that in doing so, we're both repentant and forgiven. Knowing that it signifies a new birth from this moment, this moment on. And that it is, is the beginning of something important. Knowing that we are the beloved. And so now I invite you to take that water that you went and got and hold it in your hands and say after me, move among us, Holy Spirit. Bless this water. Let this water be to us drops of your mercy. Let this water renew us in the resurrecting, resurrecting power of Jesus. And now I invite you to place your fingertips into the water bowl and make the sign of the cross on your own forehead. And remember your baptism and be blessed. God bless you.